and welcome to Make Fear Builder Worlds. This, I think, is going to be a Judge Dredd scatter terrain build. Ah, uh, yeah, look, I'm in the new uh, Officer Workshop. It's pretty cool. I've got quite a lot to do to it. I mean, in fairness, there's. Uh, I won't give you the guided tour yet because it's still absolute pigsty over there. Um, but I'm kind of in. It's done. It's painted. The, the ceilings are painted. The walls are painted. The, it's got lights and everything. Um, it's still a bit of a mare because. I'm now have another office made for work, but not my, this is my work office, but for everybody else, which is going to be over there, across the other side of the garden, and loads of stuff that should be in there is kind of piled up in here. So, at some point, when that one's done, and it's all set up, I'll give you a kind of guided tour on my new kind of light man cave. Um, this is kind of like, yeah, well, this is definitely, yeah, the, the, the Timmy Magathea Builder of Worlds kind of like man cavey kind of thing. Um, not for gaming in, not for playing in, although there will be space in the kind of like work office over there for uh, tabletop stuff. But this is the, the space for uh, me to work in. My actual desk is just there. Uh, and then I've got workshop space behind me. It's not a huge amount of workshop space, but there's plenty of room uh, for me to do what I want to do. I haven't fully equipped, decided what's going on this wall over here. Probably a big-ass picture of Just Dread, actually. But I need to work out where my, my tools are going and paints and various other bits and pieces. But quite a nice workbench set up, which we're going to get to. Uh, but right now, I want to get cracking uh, with uh, making another model. I'm enjoying making uh, uh, stuff for Just Dread at the moment. The... Uh, over the outside over here, look. There's a stack of uh, various... Apartment bits that are coming on quite nicely, shops and various other things. I'm not going to do loads and loads of videos about that because we've done one or so. Um, I might do another one when they're all kind of there, but um, these are gradually coming along. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the works at the moment. So that's certainly I could do four lots of two. And I've got more to do with that. Uh, and then, of course, last time down here uh, on the desk um, is uh, the uh, these, uh, Doodles Noodles. The noodle bar um, and that's what I'm, I'm gonna work off this time um, I like the noodle bar uh, that's gonna be in the middle of the, the shopping plaza uh, in my my mega city block um, and I want something else I want something else to be on the shopping plaza on the mega city block too so uh, from that point of view what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna make well we're gonna make a piece of scatter terrain in this video um, we're gonna get you to come over here onto the workbench I'll show you what it's gonna be I think Come over here. No, over here. Over here, behind me. Ah. Okay, so you're going to have to forgive me a little while I work out new kind of camera angles and things um, while we're doing this. That is, of course, uh, Doodles Noodles. This is the the, the uh, Trash Bash noodle bar that I made last time out. Uh, very happy with this. Nice bit of stuff. And the idea is this is very much it goes in the middle of the plaza uh, to provide cover and, and action and all the rest of it, uh, which is kind of cool. And I want something else to also do the same. But instead of just building another noodle bar or another store, I thought I'd have something else which often crops up in kind of like shopping malls and stuff. So what I thought I'd do is I'd use more of the Ambassador's uh, little boxes with which he's been spoiling people but i thought i think what i'm going to do and i'm also going to make use again of another piece of this plastic card while i still got it um i'm going to make a fountain a water fountain um kind of funky i've, I've got two different size uh boxes of from the uh, ambassador's chocolates and um, one which is this large and then one which is kind of like this big different sizes very neat and i'm what i'm thinking of is i want to have something that's going to work on multiple levels so with and then make it interesting from a gaming point of view so as opposed to just having a big pool of water it's easy i want a couple of layers with water in both falling water um it can have plants on it then as well um and uh, then that will provide lots of cover and bits and pieces round about uh for the for uh, action to take place in but it will it will be a cool kind of compliment i hope to this model over here so um well, let's bang on with it what do i need well I, i've got my white plastic card as you can see i've got my two tubs from uh the ambassador 
uh, the, the box lids. I'd got another one uh, which had fancy ones, uh, different flavours, and then the dogs got to it, so I snacked that. And I think I'm going to use a 25mm XPS foam, which I'm going to cut into uh, surrounding panels that would go around the edges, build up the edges, um, and so these will sit kind of inside it. That's kind of my idea at the moment. So what I'm going to have to do first of all, I think it's going to get a prox on, get my prox on out and cut some 25mm uh, strips, 25mm thick strips of XPS, um, uh, which are going to make a frame for this. And then I need to work out how I'm going to make the bit that goes on top of it. Because I really fancy it overhanging and having a bit of an angle. And then having the added challenge of having a kind of waterfall of some description. I'm going to use uh, here into cover. Uh, Woodland Scenics realistic water for the water effects. Certainly to go in the pools of water. Um, and I haven't worked out how the hell I'm going to do the... Uh, um, the waterfally bit yet yeah, i've got a few ideas i did one years ago um and i might might try and do that again so we're gonna have a look so this should be quite a relatively straightforward build and uh it might not be a very long video either but who knows my videos tend to ramble a little bit don't they so from that point of view i'm gonna get on with this i need to get my prox on out and get there on the workbench cut up a bunch of uh, polystyrene um for the base gonna work out how big big that's gonna be and then um I'll work out the second level and how that's going to work afterwards, methinks. Okay, so I'm using my epoxy cutter to cut this 25mm polystyrene. I'm cutting it 30mm, we're cutting the length of 30mm wide. He says, try and find just a figure. Because then that way, that way a 30mm figure can actually we'll be able to stand on the edge of the uh, pool, which is kind of cool. So that's what we're going for. Um, it's a new toy. I haven't done a lot of my procs on yet, but I'm really happy with it. I mean, yeah, they're just fantastic, aren't they? Look, I couldn't possibly achieve this straight line cut on this polystyrene without using a tool like this. Twenty-five millimeter XPS foam, and I've got my dish that hopefully is going to make the, the base of my pool. Um, and I've got my piece of plastic card that I'm going to stick it all to. Uh, and then what's going to be the kind of the first part? So I'm going to what I'm going to do is going to place this on the plastic card, work out how big a piece of plastic card I'm going to need, and I'm going to trim the plastic card to fit. And then I'm going to stick these bits on and. Um, what we're going to get is, oh, well, that's going to be the end of the first stage of the model, so I'm going to have to leave that. My problem, actually, is what I'm going to do with this. I think, actually, it's going to end up getting painted. So it doesn't matter too much what I, how I use, what I use on the bottom of this to stick it to the plastic, because uh, I think the whole thing will end up getting kind of like, you know, and painted, it will get primed the same way, um, and that way there I can uh, uh, fill in the corners because I've got right angle corners where my polystyrene meets. But this obviously has got curves on it. So I'm going to have to fill those gaps a little as well. Um, although what I might do is put a kind of capping stone on each corner. Um, that might be a really cool solution um, that will be bigger than the, um, the, the, the will hang over the gap and cover it up quite nicely. I think that's going to be a, a good cool way of doing it. So... Right, okay, so let's, well, let's carry on. Let's come over, back over here and uh, we'll do this next part. Okay, so this is where we're at in a minute. So uh, you can see now I've cut my base. I've cut my four pieces of polystyrene. Um, there's the tray that's going to sit inside. You can see how the... You can see that uh, 
it, quite a decent piece of kind of cover for characters. Um, it's a dread and a fatty behind it. So that's kind of cool. That's <laughs> now, of course, not thought about how many other bits going to work. Because what I actually want to do is I actually want to have the other bit kind of sitting like this over the top at a bit of an angle with water in here as well. I quite like the idea of having your plant growing out of it. I'm definitely going to put capping stones or maybe even a complete trim around here to cover up these gaps and cover up the, the corner gaps. But um, I might have this so it's open underneath. Um, God knows how I'm going to do that. <laughs> well, that's the challenge. Um, I quite like it being kind of tall. This is the fun bit now because I get to kind of fiddle around with it. I mean, it's not what I really need to do is stick this, make this solid. If I can't do that, oh, let's get another bit, just chuck it up for a minute. I did that, I did that. Be kind of cool, and can have a waterfall into that. But this then needs building up as well. <sighs> There's a bit of me that's tempted to leave this like this and have a kind of like thing in it that's got or have water coming up. And but the problem is, is that I can't decide how much like a Ferrero Rocher lid it's going to look, uh, or whether it, if I put a surround around it, which might be wiser. Then that way there it won't look quite so Ferrero Rocher. -y. Um, which could be a good way to do it. Then it can have a lip here where the water flows out of the pool and down onto the into the pool below. Okay, so this is where we got to. <coughs> my plastic tray from my, my chocolate box is now stuck in. I used uh, Yoohoo, if you didn't spot that, clear adhesive. Uh, and I've got my cut bits of XPS foam making the surround there a good height. It's going to be a decent bit of kind of like cover uh, and quite awkward. Now, as I've been thinking about this more and more, different bits of things have been popping into my head. I really like the idea of having a second layer, um, but I don't just want the second layer to, it could come in at a junction like this but I have actually cut an angled piece of plastic that kind of like goes to one side and these aren't how it's going to look these are just propping things up in a minute I've got two bits of I quite fancy having a, a bit of an angle like this so there'd be water in this top section um, and that would overflow the I'll have to cut a bit out where there's a kind of a lip and a, um, a waterfall, the waterfall will fall down into here and that'll be kind of cool. So I could have that right in the middle or I could stick that over one side. I don't want it to jut out beyond the base here. Can you see my finger? Yeah, just about there. Um, so that's kind of what I've got in mind for the, <clears throat> the top part. It will need structure underneath it to hold it kind of in place and stuff. And I also would like to keep this bit under here Doodle -doodle -doodle. so my figure could actually pass underneath it will just be an interesting place for um just that round like that so we can see it better it'll be just an interesting location for, from a game point of view a bit where uh we've got water under there the character can run under there it's kind of neat so i'm thinking about those corners um I thought the best thing to do would be to actually go digging through the cat. Cat, 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 cat. I had a few ideas. Um, I couldn't go digging through this cat in here. Look, I've now got several boxes of cat that are arranged in the workshop. One here, and then uh, whoop, one below it, and then all my kind of like organised cat that I'm starting to get to. Well, hey, up here in whoops, labelled cases up there. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm fucking wrecking the office. 
Uh, there's still so much stuff piled up in here because we haven't got anywhere with the other build yet. Um, so none of that cack is any good. I need to go look in, in the garage cack. That's the important stuff, the garage cack. That's where I keep big bits. And also, uh, what I've got in mind, if I can find the right thing, is um, stuff from DIY jobs, really, rather than modelling jobs, which I tend to keep kicking around as well. Okay. Some successful cack digging, but not enough. Uh, these... This is what I had in mind. This is a, uh, a right angle section of an electrical conduit, which is exactly what I had in mind. I have to do a bit of cutting, but I, I think what's kind of cool is plastic. White plastic's nice and neat, it's good size. And what I've got in mind to do with these, I'm gonna have to cut this bit out here and any bits on the inside, but this will then, wow, look at that, sit over the corners. Um, at the minute it's sitting up too high and I don't want this corner section in here because I want to keep that curved bit on the inside but I would like this lip to hang over there um, but I haven't got enough uh, I've got like, three <laughs> obviously I've got four bits of model which is no good at all whatsoever so um... oh I've got a smaller one no, that's no bloody use. Although that's going to be quite a good use, I think, for the top level. Um, because I'm going to use slightly different... I just can't do that. Sit on there like that. would be kind of cool. Uh, and I'll use thinner XPS foam to trim around the top. Which is going to be quite smart. Smart as plums! Um... So I need to go to Wix or home base or somewhere go and get some more. I think they came from Wix. I'll have to go and have a butcher's. Um, for those of you across the pond, uh, Wix is a big DIY store in the UK. Do it yourself. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'd probably buy everything at Walmart in America anyway, so from that point of view, or Target. I don't know. Who goes? Okay, right. So I'm going to go out and get a couple more of these and some more of these and also probably see if I could find some plastic trim uh, and this will really help kind of like future scape this. I want this to be kind of like really modern looking, super modern looking. Um, so um, let's go see what I can see. Okay, so yeah, check it out. Look, that's uh, two. I've got another pack somewhere. Must have left it in the car. Uh, small right angles like that. They're only two quid. Uh, the bigger ones weren't that much more either. So that's another one of those. I've got enough of those. I can now cut those out. Trim them down a little bit. Careful trimming. Um, should be giving me some really cool plastic trim on that. And I've also, I'm not going to drop this in, bought a length of this. Bing! Right angle kind of stuff. You can see that there. Well, there which is uh, wide enough, I think, to go across the whole top. But it's only going to go part of the way down, which would be kind of cool. And then, <coughs> that's... Uh, looking at the label, oh, I don't know, 15, one, yeah, right, whatever, yeah. And then there's this stuff too, which will do the top bit, uh, another right angle bit. And again, for the, uh, probably about, if I had to buy all that brand new, you're probably looking at about 12, 14 pounds, um, which is, yeah, cool. Actually, a, a, an acceptable amount of money to spend on a, scenery project. So I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to cut out first of all these retaining clips or clip them off and I'm going to cut out this corner here. I don't want that bit but I do want the rest to sit on top of that. Um, and then I'll cut some lengths of uh, the strip. That will then go over the joins, most of the joins and I'm going to lose that corner but it'll be kind of nice to have these big flat nice. <clears throat> I could either then Add them late and leave it white, mm, but I quite like the greys. I quite like painting everything grey, actually. Um, although they would go white with the, the, the white of the plastic, but of the... Yeah, no, I don't know. Let's cut them out and see what it looks like. And then I've got need a, th a planned thought for the actual base of this and how I'm going to paint it and what I'm going to do with this. Right, so what I've done um, is I have cut four of these... Four bits of plastic from this right angle. Um, they will sit 
on each end and in the middle of each side thus get me with my thusses that's going to give you a really nice modern feel to that surface there you can see it's like you know 30 millimeters wide so it takes a figure quite nicely so i cut out the the corner bits here so now it looks like this and then i had to cut out these four clips that go over the con that are for going over conduit uh, I went out with clippers first of all and they still leave little nubbly bits that need carving out and they are right pain in the bum but they're carved, cut out as well now um, need a tiny little bit of trimming but they these are going to sit on each corner like this which is starting to give me a nice kind of shape very rectangular funky kind of shape to this kind of pool because it's giving me this rectangle inside a rectangle with bits sticking out which is neat it overhangs uh, the pool edge so we can't really see that that's not much of a problem um before i stick that on i am going to have to uh mod podge all of the polystyrene because it's not sealed down here we can't see that i'm pointing at a thing you can't see spin that round before i stick all this plastic on then I need to mod podge all of the polystyrene to make sure it's all sealed. There's no gaps to when it gets sprayed. Um, nothing gets eaten there, which is kind of cool. Then I'm kind of stuck with what I'm going to do with the actual pool, because obviously you can see the bottom of the pool. And I'm going to spray this. It will get a grey undercoat, so this will all go. You won't be able to see any of that, which is kind of neat. But I also need to think about what I'm going to put into the pool. But to start off with, I'm going to... Uh, Take this off, get me a mod podge out, mod podge all of that, um, and then these bits are going to need to be stuck on with uh, Gorilla Glue is what I tend to use, gets a really good seal with that, and then these will use a, a u hoop to stick on top, and that's going to give me this really neat shape to this pull. Um, then I have to have a think about, the next job then will be to think about the this structure and how I want this other pool to work and whether I want it straight directly over the top like that which would be kind of neat I think or whether I want it to go at a bit of an angle a bit of an angle is kind of funky but I don't know how successful that would be or I could have it at one end um, but I'm kind of liking now I've cut that bit of plastic to an angle I kind of like this kind of sideway here. We'll still do the same thing. I'll have um, just put that on there. I'll cut some polystyrene so it fits. Just like while I'm fiddling with it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this whole thing because what we're getting basically is a um, what it is 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 just that shopping mall kind of feel it's a big thing i'd like some plants in it i think i can have resin water in it um try and find some 25 millimeter thick polystyrene that i could put all this up with. do like the idea of having the back or being there being a gap so members of the public can walk underneath I'll be like this so this unit here has got a water pump in somehow there's a some pumping action going on probably through the floor of the shopping mall up into here so it needs a thing here that the water flows out of and then down into there I oh, that would be pretty cool but like I said I've also cut this piece of plastic at the moment so it could go on an angle like that We have to come back over here like this. We can do that like that. I don't know if that gains me anything, but it's gonna look really neat. I think it's gonna look really neat considering it's mostly all just like plastic at the moment, but it's gonna be interesting shapes. I think I'm gonna be better off if I go, yeah, just rectangular like that. There'll be space underneath, water pool over there like that water fall from this end falling down into there um, 
which is quite cool. Needs to have a surround. I think this is going to need a surround of some description. That's what I got this other plastic for. And those little corners. They could do exactly the same job. Sitting on there with like a foam core kind of, not foam core, 10 millimeter XPS foam surround maybe. Um, and that would be kind of cool. I think. Right, I tell us what we need to do first of all is uh, this bit. So, what do we need? What do we need? We need Mod Podge. Have we got any Mod Podge? Where's the bloody Mod Podge? Oh, bloody no. Nuts. Um, okay. Well, you don't need to watch me Mod Podge in this. I'm just going to Mod Podge it and then stick it down and then I'm going to have a think about how the other bit works. There'll be an opportunity to go digging through the cack, I think, with the. I could maybe find some funky pipes and things that might work quite well coming out of here or here or whatever and up and yeah hmm yeah give me an interesting opportunity maybe to do some cool modeling on this and some pipes coming out of the floor and stuff and into the thing Ooh. anyway don't get distracted tim do one thing at a time okay so this is now dry off it's mostly dry to touch the seal that's going off and I'm playing around with how I'm going to do this bit over this side. I've dived into my, my junk boxes and my, my cack boxes and pulled these out, which you may remember are the feet from the bottom of the um, uh, stacks that I'm using for my, my buildings, which is pretty cool. So, But it's a cool shape, nice, uh, ir irregular, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oct an irregular octagon. Um, so I made a little stack like this of three, which is kind of cool. It's going to go over here. Can we see that? Yeah, it's going on this side. Um, and then that on the base, I think it's pretty much the same height as um, two lots, 25 mils, and then 30. So it's about 55 millimeters tall. So if I balance that on that like that, I think that's pretty damn flat, which means that I've got a pool here, this will have the ability to make a um, waterfall. Uh, and then I'm going to make, I need to make a block on this bit here, which is where the water comes up. But now this could be pump action. I think I might even have some pumpy kind of bits coming out of here. So this looks, looks kind of funky and sci-fi and it's almost like it's a plan. I've cut out the nibbly bits inside here. So they're going to kind of like sit around that. So I need some 10 millimeter um, XPS making a, a, a trim to go around this pool. And that way there, that'll be kind of cool, I think. I mean... I don't want you to get the impression that I'm completely making this up as I'm going along, but, but I am completely making this up as I'm going along. But it's kind of working out all right. Um, so I need a bit neat bit of this. I have got some neat bits of this cut out already. In fact, what I could probably do with this, these two bits which I cut off earlier, which just so happen to be exactly the same size, they could be trimmed stuck on here because although it's fantasy and sci-fi I also want it to be realistic and this pool up here will weigh an enormous amount so this has got to be able to stand up and hold its weight but I think that'll do it so I need to make a, a thinner trim around the outside of this just like I have here um, and then we're kind of like getting there but look, look at that, it's a structure. At this point of the build, I have to keep saying to myself, is it sci-fi-y? Does it look shopping mall-y? Will it, you know, is it gonna work? And I think, I think the answer to that is yes. On the whole. It will look like the core worlds in, in Firefly. And uh, yeah, I can imagine that in a shopping mall. In, Fancy, fancy shopping mall now, let alone one in, in Mega City One. Be quite neat. What say you? 
Could be a swimming pool, couldn't it? It's not big enough to be a swimming pool. I want plants and stuff growing it. It's going to be neat. Okay, so I need to work this bit out, but I think I've got that. That's kind of like, that's working quite well. I need to get my proxon out because I need to cut some bits of this. Clear down the deck, get out the proxon, cut the bits I need, and then, um, yeah. Start sticking out together. That will give the sealant on this more time to go off as well. Of course, half the fun about doing this kind of thing is making up, when I'm waking up as I'm going along, is also the problem solving. This is the top pool. I've cut out my four corners. They sit inside. I'm not necessarily going to have my round corners here, but what I am doing is I've got a 10mm foam here and 10mm foam in here. And I want these bits to fit in the side. I've cut them right, which is bloody annoying because I might not have. Just to fit in there like that. And then over this side, I want that to fit in there. Like that, look. And that, oh, it's upside down the minute, granted, is my, my, my pool. Now, if I turn it up the other way, oh, you bugger. Uh, wait a minute, flip it over. That's. Well, it was working a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Ah, right, okay. I think that's now because... Oh, shit. Oh, bum holes. It was, it was looking really cool. Um, what's happening there? I think that's because... I need to stick that together. Anyway, this is kind of like what I'm working on. <laughs> shit. That's, that, no. Look, I was going to be all smug then and show you this really cool bit of... Look, I've worked it all out, everybody. Aren't I bloody clever? And now I've fucked it up. Not so clever now, are you, Eglin? No, you bleed not. No. I'm going to stick these bits of trim on, I'm going to take that as a win. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, that, and that, and that off. We're going to get some... Uh, gorilla glue. We're going to splurge that along there. All the way around the outside. One there. And splurge you up there. Find a scrap of plastic to <coughs> spread it out. I ought to do it down the sides as well, really. But as long as I get that in place, it should be okay. And a bit of scrap of plastic. Scrap of plastic. Crappy scrap of plastic. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, that's the base pool all stuck together <sighs> with plastic trim bits there water in there it's gonna be ready to sort that out and now we've got to do is work out how we stick this bit together which i haven't worked out which is hideous but go to bed i can work that bit out tomorrow sort it i've got all the bits cut out i've just got to work out a decent way of cutting it i just don't really want to cut into these corners if i don't have to but if i have to i have to hey ho that's a problem for another evening no, no, campus. Okay, so now I have successfully managed to stick this upper pool together. Uh, which is cool. I haven't mod podged the uh, XPS foam, which I need to do. Um, then I need to do something with this little arrangement here of two bits of XPS foam. Need to cut, clad that in some plastic and uh, some gribbly bits, I think. The fountain then is going to rest here. <coughs> that'll have water up there, and that'll have water going into there. 
And then the challenge, of course, is going to be to make a thing that looks like a waterfall going from here down to all to here. Uh, I've also been going through my <coughs> boxes. I have these cool things. These are planters, actual plant holder things. From they come from where they come from? Sally Forth. I've got various things from Sally Forth recently. Sally Forth used to do a whole bunch of really cool stuff for their albedo skirmish game uh, that was on their website. They don't do it anymore, but I got in contact and I, they've still got some bits. So I'm thinking of sinking these into the water and these will have plants growing out of them, which will be quite cool. We'll get onto that in a minute. So I need to sort out this bit here. I'm going to quickly mob pods the purple. Then, when I've sorted out this bit here, and this bit, that can all be stuck together, stuck on, and that then becomes part of the unit. That will probably, I'll probably cut a piece of plastic card to go over that lip there to force, make that more rigid as well. This bit here. Um, then when that's done, the actual fountain side of things can be painted, because I've got a medium that's going to go in the, the base of these. <coughs> I'm going to stick my plant holders in um, but that all needs to be painted first and then we're going to get onto water so we're not that far away from finishing but there are a few bits to go at the minute already so from that point of view I need to crack on with that but it's starting to look kind of funky modern I hope architecturally architecturally interesting um, there's quite a lot of interesting ways that figures will be able to interact with it which will be pretty cool so it'll be a big thing in the middle of the shopping mall um, figures will go around one way or another you know, characters can make dramatic deaths into them, that kind of stuff, falling, run around the edges, fall in the water, be kind of neat. Hide behind it, take cover, that kind of stuff. So, uh, Mod Podge on here, deal with this bit. Yeah, okay. This is going to involve a bit of digging through the cack, but not digging through the cack, 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 cack so much as um, diving into my labelled boxes up the top, which frankly isn't quite as much fun. <laughs> but means you get models made quicker. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so I haven't got anywhere with sorting out this bit yet, but digging through various little drawers now labeled sci-fi trim. Look at that, how organized is that? I have found some of the stuff from a Maelstrom's Edge things that are gonna be helpful. I'm thinking of using this bit here. It's got a neat slot. I think I'm gonna mount that on the inside here at the height where I want the water to come out of. And then on the other side, this, I suppose this is some kind of air vent, I think. But I think that'll be really cool mounted on the outside of the fountain on the other side where the water can fall out and sheets down into the pool. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's going to be quite cool, I think. I need to facilitate that one way or another. Um, a little strip of plastic card cut to fit in here. For a start, to go behind that, that'll be kind of neat. And that'll do that all right. And then on the other side as well. <laughs> right. But, uh, keep going on the finding bits to go on this. Right, what do we need? I don't know. Back to digging through the cack. Dig right, so it's well worth mentioning. I mentioned these a number of times in a couple of videos recently, and that's the sci-fi accessory sprues from Maelstrom's Edge. Uh, they now appear to be back in stock on their website, so I've... Um, <coughs> I ordered a bunch, I got a bunch in. So look, this is one of the complete sets. It's really cool. It's got fans and hatches and these bits here, which are for making walkways, I discovered by looking at some of their photographs with these stands and handrails, so they can make handrails quite nicely. Um, they've got a few lights and control switches and fuse boxes and stuff on, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to use some of them, I think, on the side of this thing I'm making. That's one of the sprues. Uh, <coughs> and then the other sprue looks like this, which is doors, mostly. I'm using these doors on various models. There's that air vent thing, and there's bits here that will go on each side. And I, so there's some really cool, funky sci-fi things. Well worth checking out. Maelstrom's Edge. In the UK, they're distributed from Wayland. They came really quick. Um, not as quick as I could go and get them, I think, from Wayland, because Wayland is actually only about 15 minutes from where I live. But um, nevertheless, they took a day or so, and I was really surprised. I forgot they came from Wayland. So check them out. Really, really good things for sci-fi, generic sci-fi modelling, Judge Dredd, Star, Star Wars, anything, really. 
Very, very cool. Digging through the cack. All right, I'm changing these, binning those, of course. I found some stuff that I've now gone lost. What the fuck have I done with it? Oh, I forgot something. Here we are. This. This is a bit of trim that I think that came off the back of a washing machine or a fridge or something. Um, and it's really neat, but it's going to be the same height as that. Um, and what's cool is the fact that I'm going to cut it to size to fit on here, find some ends to go in it, and then I can put some gubbins inside it, pipes and things, to make it look like it's part of the, you know, the pump process so i'm just going to kind of measure a bit off chop it off and see how it goes <laughs> still need to mod podge that but uh let's have a fiddle with this for a minute i hope oh yeah look cuts all right all righty so look look check it out this that little bit of plastic grill uh i've got two ends from my maelstrom's edge uh, kit and then I've got some gubbins a couple of crates and a couple of bits and pieces I stuck inside that now the idea is that then fits on that side with the pipe sticking out the side and that's going to sit on the side of the pool like that that's where all the water pumps up into a bit of goes on the top which is looking like this now now the only problem with all of that is that um, I was going to put it all together, all in one thing, and spray it all in one go, but I think that's not very practical. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is uh, spraying this in several pieces. I've got down here, I don't know if you can see them down here. Here, down here, down here, look. Let's take that off for a minute. Stuck in here. A couple of these planters that we were looking at. There's going to have gravel on the, on the base, but that's not going to be in there until after it's sprayed. So there's my, now I've got my column the supporting column that needs to have something stuck across the bottom to hold in place this is my pumping bit bit of machinery which is going to be quite interesting and look quite nice and then there's my top port which is going to place on there i want to line up these things so this bit here especially sits on top of the pumpy gear i can't do that kind of thing sit in the middle kind of malarkey it's looking pretty cool um, around this side this is where the water's going to flow out and then drop down into here I haven't quite worked out how I can do that I'm thinking about that in a minute but I'm working towards my resin so in many ways what I need to do now if all my bits are dried and my, this part hasn't completely stuck there so I can't paint that yet is to start spraying some of this and painting it so so I can start putting it together definitely leaving that side actually the problem is is can't really get in there, but if I leave that side open like that, then that's I can get into most of that paintbrushes in there. I think that's quite a good solution, though. But I quite like that, it's much better than whatever I could have done with blocks of XPS foam. That looks like funky bits of machinery and stuff now, and that's it's quite cool. Uh, coming on, so what I need, I need, I need to spray some stuff, don't I? Really, uh, yeah. That's what I need to do, but I can't really do that until this fiddly bit here is stuck fiddly to the bottom of the fiddly pool. Okay, here he is. It's a little pumping station bit. It's kind of cool. It's all right. I'll come out. I'm gonna just mostly uh, no oil wash that. I probably put some raw, some rust in it, dirty down rust inside it. Uh, I might paint the outside a different kind of colour. Pick out some details, but it's not going to take very long. So I'm going to paint this up and then add it to the uh, model, the rest of the models, um, and the garage getting painted. Let's do that. Okay, this is now the cool part. Like I said, time and time again, as soon as you get primer on it, it all starts to take shape. This now really starting to look like uh, what I'm after. So the next job now is definitely. Paint it. That's not going to take a lot. It needs some dry brushing on it and bits and pieces. Um, still in separate bits at the moment. There's the pump house. I've got to stick this part here across to that. So it needs sticking together, but I'm going to probably paint the bits separately and then stick it together. And then we've got to look at gravel and water. 
get in there. Okay. So, let's get on with the painting. <laughs> okay, then this is where the proofing arrows in the pudding. I've got my pool. Um, there's the top section. I'm going to do this bit to start off with. Them separate, they will get stuck on eventually. I put my a base plate here, sticking that bit together there. This bit, you fucker. This getting stuck on here will eventually hold that in place as well. So, um, what I'm going to do now is use some of this aquarium gravel. I normally use this actually um, for my other work as uh, fake gunpowder. But what I'm aiming to do is I want to have this all in the base of the pool um, so it's got a bottom to it. <laughs> There's a musket pool in there. Um, and then that way there, there's something in the base of the, the pond so it's not just the bottom painted part of the pool. I want to scatter this then. All around, I'll pick out any clot. Not that it really matters too much because there can always be the bit of litter that's been thrown in anyway. All around the base, <laughs> apart from anything else. This uh, stuff going in, when it said resin pour on it, I'm hoping it's going to help hold the other things in place in the pools. Because the one thing I have discovered is that super glue doesn't want to really stick stuff down very well to the plastic that the um, chocolate boxes are made out. Yeah, so that's my black gravel in here. <coughs> and it's going to be a bit of an experiment now, pouring resin into this, because of course, what I don't want it to do is to pour a big chunk out of the way, but I'm going to pour a thin layer of resin so it kind of coats all the stone. And then I'm going to do the same in this one. Uh, although I've got to put stones in it first, haven't I? We are using Woodland Scenics Realistic Water, which is stuff I've definitely used in the past. My modular battlefield that I still use, 15, 18 years old, all done with Woodland Scenics resin. That was the only thing you can get at the time. Um, so it's a, very much a tried and tested material for me. No mixing, surface dries firm and clear. Self-leveling, minimal shrinkage, water-soluble, water non-toxic, customised with water tints. Well, I want it to be clean. So um, do not shake. We are not shaking. If you shake it, you get bubbles in it. You don't want to do that. So uh, here we go. Oh, yeah. takes ages to go off and dry even in a fairly well insulated warm room like this so I'm just taking them the opportunity to catch up with some other apartment bits to go in my stack so two more apartments this is the one with the setting side there's a wall section that going there and then we've got down here another two apartments same I've got to make to this because I lost a bit of wall so I've got to do that and then I go outside and spray these or the garage and spray these and there's the store for the front for the lowest floor as well so that's two lots of those now which is kind of cool um, this whole little project's come together quite nicely if only I could find a bit I lost I'd be really happy making really good progress although it's taking ages because resin takes ages to dry who knew I knew because I've done it before but I've kind of forgotten Ages since I've done any resin work. So I've now got my two sections, which I want to do the next bit. I want to stick these together. And I'm going to keep pouring resin, but I also want to make my water. F this bit is going to be an experiment, right? I'm going to see how good it looks. Well, I'm not quite sure. I want waterfall, a water coming from out of here down into here, kind of like a wall of water. First thing I think I have to do is stick 
this bit to this bit. I've got to line up my, my bits there, I'm going to do that, and then that will. Because the next bit is my waterfall. It's going to be solid. I'll show you what I've got in mind for that in a moment. But to do that, I need glue on here, glue on here. Super glue edge. Okay, so how am I going to make water? Well, solid. There are probably lots of different effects, but I'm thinking of using some cling film. I'm going to get a sharp pair of scissors. He says, not knowing where there's a sharp pair of scissors. But I'm going to cut out a bit, and what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to hang it. Let's turn this around this way. I cut out a bit. Hang it. So it's sitting in the mouth of the fountain bit, the fall at the top. And then lay it into the uh, stuff at the bottom. Now I genuinely don't know if this is going to work. I've done this before uh, on an old piece of scenery. I thought it looked quite good. It was some time ago. But I think that's going to look kind of okay. I might ruffle it up a little bit. But, and then that will stick into the water there. And then I'll resin around that and see what it looks like. So, now I don't see why this shouldn't be a, a workable idea. There might be. <laughs> I don't know. I can't hear. Speak up. There might be some people right now going, No, what are you doing? There's a much better way of doing it. But I can't think of a better way. Well, it's kind of cost effective and cheap. So. Of course, this stuff is a right bugger to work with. He says, cutting up there. Old oh, cling film's cling film, isn't it? But uh, if I glue that in there, find a bead of glue in there, and then hang it down into the water, why won't that look like waterfall? A waterfall? Eh? Hey? I think it's going to look like a waterfall. I mean, it's meta. I mean, it's a model on a twenty-eight millimeter model. For God's sake, it's a bloody metaphor, isn't it? Look, it's, if it's not actually a waterfall, it's a metaphor for a waterfall. So, I'll put some super glue under there. I should have thought about this before. I'm not fucking thing stuck now. <laughs> really warm in the office at the moment because I've got the heated turn up to um. Make the resin go off. I've got to run a bead of glue under here. Bead of glue, bead of glue. Bead of glue. Right. Under there. Now, take water, per se. Take it off. Thing. Oh, you fucker. Don't watch this bit, kids. Rude. Stick. Super glue. Super glue the... <laughs> cling film. Should have done several layers. Huh? What's that look like? Right. Stick that in there. Is that super glued in? Yeah, it has. Put that there like that. What do we think? Does that look like water? It does. I think it looks like water. Now, <coughs> well, it's going to look like water in my model. Whether you look like it or not, I don't give a rat's ass now because it's here. So, I'm going to get some more resin and I'm going to do another pour. I'm going to pour resin into the bottom, which is looking pretty good, and I'm going to pour more resin in the top. So, it's a lot of you. That's gone in the right. So, resin port. Okay, so, this was my waterfall, which I've also poured a bunch of resin on. I'm not quite pleased with it, really. I mean, look at it. Watery, splashy, splashy. Water coming out of there. Um, put a few stones in the bottom down here. I could do with a couple more layers of water in. What I want to do now is introduce some plant. To this bit of the model as well. I got some uh, plastic fish bomb plants, which I thought might be quite cool. They might give a bit of colour. Um, and if I lay them, if I put them in, coming out of the, the thought was 
if I have a few of them kind of like in these planters then over the edge a little bit and hanging into the water then the water will go around them and um, yeah Okay, first stop, I quite like these out here, they're kind of like, this is the old idea was this bit was it was going to have plants coming out of it, which is quite nice. Now, plant coming down here, um, coming out, don't even go too wild, but what's kind of cool is I'm going to stick that and then pour resin so the bottom leaves are actually in the water, which would be kind of cool. And I'm probably, I might use the odd flowering plant out of this set as well i don't know whether the dye will leak out of that into water we'll have to see how we go with that might be quite cool um and then down here down the bottom i'm thinking uh, i had some bits oh, don't worry. i've dropped the bloody things where have they bling gone there oh there uh, thinking some of this on one side. And there may be some just some other planty bits in there. Water in it too. Alright. So here's my plants all stuck in. And now I'm gonna do one more pour of resin. Which hopefully I'll get the odd plant leaf that will get stuck in there as well. Which will hold those plants in place. These aren't stuck in at all. I'm just going to pour resin on them and hold them in place. I'll stick them in the resin. And then I'm going to float these little lilies on top of the resin as well. I think. So here we go. Well, I've got to say, even if I do say so myself, this is working out really kind of nicely. I've got lilies floating on the water. That was down there. You can see it's a little bit murky and misty. It looks really, really nice. You can see in there. I've got plant life in the water. I've got water, leaves in there. The leaves sit in the resin real nice like this, so they aren't going anywhere, but they're all part of the thing. I've got plants growing out of the water. It doesn't matter if they even look a bit plastic because this is the future inside a big hab block where they might have plastic plants because keeping real plants will be a pain in the, the bum so you never know if they look like real plants they look like real plants i'm very very happy with my waterfall two coats of resin now on my, my uh, um clean film looks grand so yeah, I'm now going to add, do some old school stuff. It's cool. Um, what have I done? I've lost the damn things. I lost them. I lost them. I lost the thing I need. Uh, where is it? Well, I'll tell you what. I need this. Oh, here we go. Under this. I've got this. This. In the uh, I Am The Law box there, the Judge Dread. Not, I've got to admit, not this. I Am The Law. Anthrax 12 inch single. No, um, not in that Iron the Law, but in the Judge Dread Iron the Law box set from Warlord Games, you do get, apart from everything else, the figures and the rules and the counters and blah, you get this nice little sheet of transfers. Right, um, I know I've used on other scenery, I've used um, the stuff I bought from Debris of War, which is cool, but these are kind of like full on, proper Judge Dread type style. Graffiti, so I'm going to use a couple of these and I'm going to stick them on the odd side of this uh, Laid claim to the odd bit of the territory, which is kind of neat and like some of this model being a bit old school because I've kind of made it up and I haven't used loads of Super modern components and there's foam in there and there's bits of stuff from a DIY shop So it's got this model. I'm, I'm liking has got a bit of an old school feel. I'm going to use water transfers uh on this model too which is really neat so i'm dead pleased with that so uh, which is ridiculous but this is a nice little touch and it will really add to it so i'm not sure what i'm gonna have i think i'm gonna add the odd thing on around here maybe so where some kind of like juva stood and scrawled across there um i'm gonna find a couple of those to stick on i kind of like that uh rage against the megs drock the jays 
no life before recycling. Nice. Who judges the judges is going to have to go somewhere on a piece of scenery at some point. Three power, power, thrill power. Diablos. That's quite a good one. Diablos. I could go on there and I'm going to do another one on the other side. Now, um, I don't know how many of you people are. You, oh, well, I do. I know a lot of you are old school, but check it out. I've uh, uh, come in here. I've bought, come into the office. I have a uh, plate with water. No water in beaker to get it out of the house because it's like Takeshi's fecking castle in my back garden at the moment where the offices are being worked on and so is a load of decking and the decking hasn't been complete there's no actual deck on the deck at the moment it's just wooden beams between the back of the house and my office and workshop so I wasn't going to do that and I now take a pair of scissors and my set of decals uh, and or decals depending on how you like to call them uh, and I'm going to cut out the one that says Diablos for a moment, which I've lost a bit. Stick that in the water. Try to cut as close to it as possible. It's a really nice little sheet of, of transfers, these, but they are very, very close to each other. So you have to be pretty careful. So it's to not only not cut the one you're working with, but cut any others that are around it. I'm going to have to find a scalp in a moment to do the next bit. Okay, so that's just Diablos. Cut round that end. Drop it in the water. There it goes, curls up the end. You've got to leave it in the water for a little while. And uh, the water will lift it off. I might even put a little bit more water on my plate just to make it a little deeper. Deeper, deeper. Put that right down there. Give you a minute or two and it'll soak off. I like to use a scalpel and a brush to do the applying. Yep, see Diablos is moving, so okay, I'm gonna take I might need the scalpel. I'm gonna lift this out of the water. And then using my brush. I'm gonna apply this just on here. I'm gonna use my brush, which is wet, to take the Diablos. So I often need to move the little bit of blue cardboard out from behind it. Come on, you know you want to. I made a right mess of that. Hey! But I'm me, didn't I do a grand job? What a pro. Here we are. Bit of water on there just to smooth it out, get it where I want it. Nice. Okay, so we've applied the chopper here to the front. Whoops, because I imagine him kind of like sitting there on his board spraying that on. And then because I like this being a centre of a kind of like attention in the shopping mall, we've got a couple of different gang tags. Cosmic Punk's there. I hear Hell's Ramones both laying claim to this piece of terrain. <sighs> well, there you go. Um, that's it finished. I think. Well, I've finished to the point I want to have it finished. I could. <laughs> Check it out. I'm rolled a piece of that. There you go. That is uh, my shopping mall water feature. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put it on the table and put some other stuff with it to see how cool it looks. Um, I like doing this for Just Drag because I've got painted figures for this. Uh, which is like, yeah, cool. Thanks, Hook. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really quite pleased with this. Um, Got to admit... Got to admit, it took a little while longer than I thought it was going to. And that's mostly, of course, because I've used resin, uh, clear resin to make the water. Um, and there's at least 24 to 36 hours in between each pour, each layer of resin. Uh, because it's February and I'm in a workshop, it's insulated, the heater's on. But the first layer especially took a long time to go off. Subsequent layers, higher up, quicker. But I am really pleased. It's kind of like, got that kind of like... Uh, brutal architecture that I think should be around. It's really difficult trying to picture what I think Meg City 1 should be. Um, because when you look at the uh, the comics, especially a lot of the old stuff, I, it's a long time since I've been a regular reader of, of Dread. I read loads and loads of stuff in the 80s and 90s. And, and all the outside of the blocks are all kind of weird, funky kind of shapes. Uh, but the inside of the blocks are kind of brutal. I, I'm a, a kid of a, a, a English new town. I grew up in Basildon as a kid, and you go and visit these places now. It's easy to walk around Basildon Town Centre. Um, lovely place. If you haven't, if you've never been there, 
don't bother. Um, but it's easy to walk around Basildon Town Centre and to imagine that being enclosed and being on the ground floor of that mega city block. It looks really kind of similar to the ground floor of the block in uh, the 2012 Dread film, to be quite honest. Um, and I like that kind of brutal architecture. Living in Mega City One would be depressing and harsh, and the architecture needs to kind of like relay that, I think. So this kind of like water feature with its heavy grey and re rectangular lines works really well. The plants help to kind of soften that a little bit and give a bit of colour to the piece of terrain. And I'm, I'm really happy with the waterfall, like I said. Uh, we've got this wall of water, which is quite neat. There's a number of, of places it offers. It's going to offer pretty good cover in the middle of a table, and there are bits to dodge underneath and for figures to move through. So, yeah, I, it's cool. It's a, a piece of, I think, in some ways, very old school um, war game scenery. Although <coughs> XPS foam is pretty new, I suppose, and being able to just to go to the, the DIY store, buy the bits you want. Um, that was really useful. So working with all that plastic, pretty good. Um, so I hope you like it. Uh, if you like what I've made and if you think it goes well with all the other stuff, uh, leave a comment down below. If you would, that would be really cool. If you uh, think that I've made a complete hash of it, uh, pff, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know why you think I've made a hash of it because, frankly, I'm quite happy with it. Um, if you want to see more Just Dread content, please do and make a comment down below. I'm, I'm happy. I want to keep building Dread content. I've got my... Over here, um, you can see my, my hab stack going up. Um, I've got other bits actually on top of a, a crate up there. It's all grey that needs painting up to go in there. So I am adding more and more to that. If there are other bits of Mega City 1 you'd like to see me have a go at building, please say so as well. I need to build some Megway stuff for vehicles, I think, fairly soon. But I'm still doing the interiors. Um, I'm not really interested in doing Cursed Earth. Cursed Earth let's face it, is Necromunda ash waste isn't it really um, so I, I, um, I, I could do some stuff for that uh, I've still got my ash waste uh, cargo ridge hauler down here um, I could do other bits like that but I want to keep this as much Mega City 1 as I possibly can but if you think there's a specific bit of Mega City 1 scenery that I could build then let me know down below if this is the first of my videos you have seen then uh, go back and watch the other dread ones go back and watch the other necromunda ones just go back and watch it all i know several people have done that recently which is really cool if you've enjoyed this video it's the first time you see one of my videos please uh, click like and make sure you subscribe uh it's ticking away it's doing quite nicely from that point of view and if you would like to support this uh channel further you could also consider joining my patreon which of course can be found at oh what is it Oh yeah, Patreon, patreon.com slash a Magathea Builder World. Uh, that works really well, uh, and then for a price of a cup of coffee every month, you can get yourself into the point where you're eligible to enter competitions for me to make new scenery, which reminds me I'm going to have to do a Patreon build pretty soon. I've got one lined up actually, it needs to come, it needs to be done fairly quickly, but I keep getting distracted with Mega C1. So, <clears throat> thank you very much there is going to be a Burroughs and Badgers small build in the meantime we're getting ready for salute you might have seen photographs in one place or another uh, on a Magathea page or on my Warbands of Anglia page I stick it on Magathea too got a big thing going on for salute it's going to be B&B &B again but who knows in the future maybe next year I might take Judge Dredd that will be pretty cool because by then I can have quite a nice kind of table so thank you very much for watching this has been Magathea Build the World <clears throat> I'll see you in the mega city. Who judges the judges? Hmm. Now for the saucy bit, I'm going to put it down on a table and we're going to film around it and have judges. You know the deal.